Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan Nemitz Pierce. Ukraine war news update, actually. The first part thereof is the geopolitics one that I didn't have time to do yesterday. I had a really busy day. Yes, I ended up being out in the evening. Uh, and so I just want to wrap up the video I did early doors, just that extra video in terms of the news and then move on to some other things. I will probably have to release another geopolitics video later today because the NATO summit and lots of things coming out of that have presented an awful lot of information. Um, just to remind you, Dmitry Medvedev, the previous uh, president and prime minister, uh, in Russia said yesterday that essentially uh, he wants the eradication of both Ukraine and NATO. He said either one or the other, but preferably both. Uh, so that set the stall out for you know, what Russia's position is vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine and NATO. Uh, and then NATO came out and, and said a decisive enabler of Russia's war against Ukraine uh, is Beijing. So Beijing is, and China, well, Beijing is China. China is under the microscope in terms of supporting Russia, but also in terms of its own threats. Um, it's interesting that Heritage Foundation leaks, there's been, not leak, hack, uh, Heritage Foundation's been hacked, two gig of data has been uh, got hold of, We're waiting to see what that entails. There are some claims that IP addresses connected to China, and it's thought Russia, but certainly China are involved there, in which case you've got a China, Russia, Hungary, Orban, Trump axis that's undermining US foreign policy and US domestic policy, actually. Uh, it's very challenging. That's That could be something to watch out for, that Heritage Foundation hack. Um, yeah, so... Uh, NATO have demanded that China halt shipments of weapons, components and other technology critical of rebuilding the Russian military. Uh, then we talked about how uh, China has been involved in Hungary, that Orban signed an agreement with China wherein Hungary will hand over anyone that China's government accuses of a crime. Uh, and now Chinese police will patrol Hungarian streets as well. Orban is selling the country to Russia, China and Iran. So there's these growing connections between some of the Balkan states and China. The Belt and Road Initiative is very much involved in that area of the world. And Orban went, of course, from Kiev to Putin in Moscow to Xi Jinping in Beijing, uh, then to the NATO summit and then to Trump. And he's just had a meeting with Trump. And that's a meeting with Trump. I'll probably talk about that a little bit later. News is coming out about that, how Orban says, yep, Trump's uh, got planned to stop the war, basically. Doesn't look anything like we weren't expecting, such as an appeasement plan to uh, get Ukraine to capitulate to Russia, I would imagine. Uh, but nonetheless, he has come out and is Orban and is bullish about uh, Trump. Um, meanwhile, Trump yesterday... Uh, well, there were leaks that Trump is considering cutting back Intel sharing with Europe, according to officials, as a warning that Trump will get involved in greater isolationism that fits in with the compromise uh, by, you know, of uh, Russia and China in terms of Trump's presidency, the people in his uh, forthcoming administration, if that is to, uh, if he is to win, it's all very worrying um, it's good, though, that there are some Republicans sitting behind a much stronger approach to uh, to repelling Russia inside Ukraine and that we have here Mitch McConnell saying slow aid to Ukraine did not restrain the escalation but lengthened the war, saying the right things there. Uh, we've had Mike Johnson saying the right things that Ukraine should be able to use US weapons as they see fit. However, this side of the political spectrum. I mean, to be fair, Mike Johnson is a conduit between both sides of the Republican Party, I think, but he's called MAGA Mike for a reason. Well, un unfortunately, the, the MAGA side of things appear to be very much in the Orban uh, Putin camp as opposed to the Zelensky uh, NATO camp. Uh, Clarence Thomas, who's a Supreme Court judge, uh, has, is under a lot of pressure to explain how he took free yacht trips to Russia and helicopter flights to Putin's hometown. And this is going back some time. However, news has come out that uh, these may be undeclared uh, gifts from hmm, 
the dictator of Russia. So the Supreme Court could well be uh, compromised to some degree. Uh, all the while, the Chinese government were have been sending ships to the Philippines as well as uh, so here we've got you know ships all around the Philippines, a lot of naval military activity, as well as planes around Taiwan, with yesterday recording the largest single day violation of Taiwan's air defense ever recorded. 66 Chinese aircraft were detected around the island, 56 of them uh, crossed the defensive zone and came as close as 33 nautical miles. So it's all hotting up that side of of the world. Ukraine has said they wanted they want to hold a second peace summit with Russia before the US election. Uh, Bloomberg quoted sources as saying, and this is because they're so worried about a Trump uh, victory. Kiev is in a hurry because of fears that Donald Trump may return to the White House and stop military support for Ukraine. Publication writes, however, some US officials doubt that the summit with Russia's uh, participation will take place. And indeed, Russia have subsequently said they're not interested in that. So Interesting because if Ukraine has said we're up for a, a peace summit and Russia have turned it down, then that's on Russia, right? Uh, okay, going. So that was what we talked about yesterday. Uh, going forward, Zelensky said he had a productive meeting with the Turkish President Erdogan uh, at the NATO summit. We are preparing to hold a conference on, in Turkey dedicated to food security and freedom navigation within the framework of the implementation of the decisions of the peace summit. Uh, he said. We have the EU's Joseph Borrell saying about the NATO summit, we support only Zelensky's peace plan for Ukraine. Stopping aid would lead to Ukraine's capitulation. The EU is united in continued support to prevent a puppet government in Kiev. Um, and Zelensky signed a bilateral security agreement with his Romanian counterpart, Klaus Johannes, uh, the presidential office announced that, that included the, uh, the Romanian patriot, I believe, as well. Uh, then we heard that because, as I mentioned earlier, NATO had accused China essentially of supporting Russia's war. China has rejected that subsequently uh, in a communique issued during NATO's annual summit in Washington. NATO condemned Beijing's support for Russia, demanding it cease all material and political backing. Uh, China responded by calling the accusations, quote, provocative, blatantly false and slanderous and lodged a protest against NATO's statements. Um, and meanwhile, Hungary uh, does not want and will not support NATO becoming an anti-China bloc. This is very important, by the way, because what you've seen in the NATO summit is not so much a pivot, but an inclusion of China in NATO's optics much more formally. So NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, has been an alliance that brings together US and Canada with Europe in terms of facing the threat from what was the Soviet Union, uh, now Russia. But actually, you're, you're looking at Australia, Japan, New Zealand, uh, Philippines maybe, as being really strategically positioned in the Indo-Pacific and looking at China as being a threat to that part of the world and indeed the whole globe. And NATO is looking at taking on that remit well, Hungarian Foreign Minister Shijato has said that Hungary won't support NATO becoming an anti-China bloc. And obviously, that's because they are compromised by China, as we've just discussed. Uh, having done a, a deal with China, they're going to send back any uh, Chinese, not so much distance, but anyone critical of China, they, they'll extradite, it, it appears. They are right on board with China's objectives. Uh, having had a lot of investment from China in the Belt and Road Initiative, the railway from Serbia to Hungary, I believe, being financed by China. Uh, speaking on the sidelines of the NATO summit, summit Shijelto also said Ukraine's admission to NATO would weaken unity within the group. Uh, and then you've got, talking about NATO, this is Tommy Tuberville, who is possibly one of the worst of the, uh, of the MAGA-type uh, Republicans. He's a senator as well, which is even worse. He's not like a two-year representative like Marjorie Taylor Greene in the House of Representatives. This is a serious lawmaker, and he's he's just, I think, clueless on foreign policy. Biden said don't, and Putin said I will do, and went into Ukraine and is still there. What is up with this? Where does Biden think he's uniting NATO and shutting down Putin? Well, first of all, congratulations to the American taxpayers for funding 
European uh, defense for the last 75 years. And that's what President Trump said. Pay your pay your uh, uh, dues. Biden said, of course, he doesn't understand how NATO works or how it has been the decision of the U.S. to do that for the U.S.'s strategic interests. It's like the U.S. were the main um, enemy, if you like, of the Soviet Union during the Cold War times. It was in fully the U.S.'s strategic interest to have bases set up in Germany to counter the threat of the Soviet Union. So Tommy Tuberville not only seems to think in a Trumpian way that NATO is this thing that's paid for rather than your own defences that you pay for. So he's he's kind of got that wrong and then he just doesn't understand the history of the US NATO activities. It just it it frustrates the hell out of me because he's disinforming everyone and he's an absolute grade A numpty. Um so, and it's also worth noting that the only time Article 5 was invoked, Europeans came to the defence of the US after 9-11. Um, as someone says here, so Ross Baker says, Trump just won't give up the talking point about NATO as a kind of costly but useless burden on US taxpayers. You should tell, tell that to the families of du Danish, Dutch, German and British soldiers killed in Afghanistan, heeding the call of Article 5 uh, of the NATO Treaty. And Stephen Pfeiffer says, yeah, exactly, more than a thousand NATO soldiers died in Afghanistan fighting alongside their American comrades. Uh, they were only there because they were US allies. So stick that in your pipe and smoke it, Tuberville, you absolute moron. Um, anyway, there's a lot of talk about Biden. We'll get on to NATO in a second. But before his talk at NATO, the press conference at NATO, uh, apparently Chuck Schumer a uh, major big time democrat was has been thought to be open to dumping biden at the top of the ticket according to three sources uh, schumer is hearing from donors and assessing a path forward a schumer spokesman declined to comment uh, that's axios there now there's been talk at cnn i think of of discussed this um msnbc have discussed this i think Apparently, Obama is behind the scenes, supposedly pulling the strings with regard to ousting Biden. It's funny how previously, you know, um, Republicans have been accusing uh, a Biden of just being uh, the president behind which, um, you, you know, behind Biden, pulling, pulling strings for Biden. Well, actually, here we've got the claim going counter to that, that he's actually pulling the strings to get rid of uh, Biden. And uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting one, especially since then Biden um, was gave his speech at NATO and he introduced Zelensky as President Putin. And then later in the uh, in the press conference, accidentally called uh, Kamala Harris Trump. And so you got, oh my goodness, two absolute gaffes. And of course, that's what's taking up all of people's like bandwidth and media outlets bandwidth with, with regard to the NATO uh, summit and the subsequent uh, speeches and, and yeah, op um, press, what's the press conference? So there were there were a lot of pretty good things coming out of the speeches there quite solid in terms of actual nato substance but as mentioned it's all about those gaffes and i don't know how tenable uh, biden's positioning now is i mean when you look at say the guardian and the guardian live feed uh, it, it's it's all about that. Biden mistakenly calls Kamala Harris vice president Trump at the NATO press conference and he calls Zelensky uh, president Putin um, I mean, he corrected it straight away, but, you know, damage is done. Uh, Biden, oh, actually, if we go to some of the summary. So, yeah, those two points. Um, he ha he was asked, essentially, the whole thing came a bit of a domestic, American domestic political stump speech for um, for Biden, not only with what he said, but also how he was being questioned by the people there. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, difficult one i mean there there was there was still quite a lot of talk about nato positioning so on and so forth but it really it's all about um the american election that's coming in november
In fact, further down the summary, we've got Representative Eric Sorensen of Illinois uh, has joined Democrats calling for Biden to step down. You've got Politico and Vanity Fair reporting that George Clooney was the one who reached out to Obama um, uh, and reached out to him before publishing the op-ed in the New York Times I talked about yesterday. I'm sure I mentioned George Clooney because that, that's a big one. He's a big uh, fundraiser, fundraising coordinator, really, for the Democrats. And he brought out a pretty uh, damaging New York Times op-ed where he's advised Biden to step aside. Yeah, this is at CNN. It's reported that former President Barack Obama, under whom Biden served as vice president, met privately with former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to discuss their mutual concerns over Biden's presidential bid. So I think things are gaining momentum there. My position has been that you're likely to see Biden step down after NATO. He was saying, he was mentioning NATO in questions before the NATO summit that were kind of weird by point of fact that it, the NATO summit means nothing to most normal, average, run-of-the-mill um, Joe Bloggs type voters in the United States. So when he, and he used it in a number of different speeches and, and answers to questions where he's like, I'm the one that's going to bring NATO together. I'm, you know, NATO, NATO, NATO. And these are moments when he's like, one of them, I think, was at some kind of rally and he's talking NATO and actually no one really there, no one there really gave a crap. So I think NATO was so big in his head because I think he's going to be using that as the uh, the marker for him to successfully do the NATO summit and then think about handing over the reins to maybe Kamala Harris. So uh, my expectations, I mean, not, not certain, but I think it's likely that Biden will st will step aside now that the NATO summit is over. Uh, but I guess we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, as Colby Badwa says, the Biden shields are already working overtime, screaming through their tears. But he corrected himself, as in after he made the gaff, the Putin gaff. Too late, damage is done. The adults in the room know that he's incapable of doing his job for another four years, let alone uh, four months, let alone another four years. And um, Colby Badwa is under the impression he's a conservative from Canada. I've had him on the show a couple of times. He thinks that both Trump and Biden are not good and there needs to be someone else other than those two. Uh, I, I, I don't disagree necessarily, actually. Um, yeah, so what's interesting then are polls that are coming out. And indeed, is it in somewhere in here, I think, there was talk about... Yeah, so here it is. In case you missed this earlier, New York Times reports that the Biden campaign has been quietly polling to test Kamala Harris's strength against Biden. Um, under siege from fellow Democrats, President Biden's campaign is quietly testing the strength of Vice President Harris against former President Trump in a head-to-head -head survey of voters as Mr. Biden fights for the, his political future with, with a high-stakes news conference on Thursday. This, the survey, which is being conducted this week, and was commissioned by the Biden campaign's analytics team, is believed to be the first time since the debate that Mr. Biden's aides have sought to measure how the vice president would fare at the top of the ticket. It was described by three people who are informed about it and insisted on anonymity because of the sensitive nature of the information. So what you've got, it appears, is Biden putting the feelers out for a Harris uh, ticket, uh, for Harris being at the top of the ticket. And this is how it has been reported um, on ABC, I think. So listen to this. Yeah, that it's Biden viewed unfavorably by just 42% of the country. Oh, and by the way, interesting polling out as well that the race is tight between Biden and Trump. So what's then confusing matters is that actually, and this is probably because of the damage that Project 2024 is, 2025 is doing, is that actually Trump isn't smashing Biden in some of the polls at the moment, which you'd think, considering Biden has made an absolute hash of the last three weeks, right? Uh, but but the fact that they are still so close makes you realise that a lot of people still really hate Trump, right? And it, it, if I was a voter in the US, I'd be like, yeah, Biden every time a coconut over Trump, but I think Biden should go. Uh, so yeah, make it, make it that what you will.
that it's Biden viewed unfavorably by just 42 percent of the country. Trump's number is considerably worse, only 34 percent favorability. That is 25 points underwater. Yet, all, despite all of this, George, this is a dead heat of a race. In the two weeks of the debate, so much has changed, but the horse race truly hasn't. Donald Trump up a single point well within the margin of error. For, com for contrast, back in April, he led by two points. We're basically where we've been all along, George. We have that new finding about Vice President Kamala Harris. Yeah, and this is striking. Now, the numbers are within the margin of error. They're very small, but we do see Kamala Harris with a small edge over Donald Trump. Again, Biden was down one. In other words, Harris is polling better than Biden. Now, one of the big arguments against Harris was that her favorability, her polling has been poor, but actually no one's really polled her an awful lot. She's been kind of sidelined by the Biden administration, really. I think she's been kind of rolled out for the abortion debate and going around the country talking very well incidentally about reproductive rights and she's very strong on that and that's a key a key component of the campaign uh but if it if she's given a fair crack of the whip it may be that actually people will warm to her and she is much better or she might well be much better at holding by uh, holding trump to account in those live interactions or even in not even in uh, a live debate but in a, a press conference scenario where biden's been really weak like Trump is there for the taking, saying some insanely bonkers things at every rally he's at. Like people are focusing on Biden's gaffes, but but Trump is just splurging absolute incoherent nonsense at every single rally he's going to. Someone who's on the top of their game should be taking Trump to pieces. And if she starts being able to do that, uh, then she is going to poll much better than Biden. I'm absolutely confident. Now, she, those died in the wall Republicans are never going to consider voting a for a woman of color, a woman of color d Democrat, right? For a certain certain proportion of those MAGA, um, but it's not about them. It's not about the people over there. It's about the people in the middle. Who has the greatest? Um, purchase on the center swing voters and those people who are wobbling at the moment because of Biden's gaps will Harris actually play well and we have Harris up three that is a hypothetical matchup nothing is happening right now because it can only happen if Biden steps away and really interesting to me George we asked Democrats who should run instead if if Biden uh, steps aside the only answer that we saw any significant number for was Kamala Harris. Almost a third of Democrats named Harris. No other candidate was even in the single digits, George. Candidates Biden viewed on favor. So Harris is actually the forerunner. She's really polling above everyone in terms of who would be uh, the the uh, the alternative to Biden. So interesting data coming out, and this is on the back. And I, I'm not trying to like. You know, give you a pro-Democrat position here. But I'm, what I'm trying to do is explain that this should be a gimme. This should be a shoe in for the Democrats because the American economy is absolutely on fire at the moment. So as Ben Wickler here says, in case you missed it, amid all the media and political drama, inflation is falling, crime is falling, border crossings are falling, climate emissions are falling, inequality is falling, energy production is growing, real wages are growing, jobs are growing, unions are growing, stock market is growing. And you're getting more and more uh, record-breaking days for X, Y and Z. US inflation slowed again in June in, in a sign that price pressures continue to ease. The number of Americans filing for unemployment benefits Benefits falls last week and remains at healthy levels. Uh, you've got um, inflation declined 0.1% in June. So it's not like slowing down, it actually declined. So deflation, that's a first decrease since the pandemic month in May 2020. Gas prices declined in June, electricity prices declined in June, and rent had its smallest monthly increase 0.2% since August 2021. Um, lots, lots of data that basically, if this was any other administration in the history of American politics, they'd be like smashing the polls. But the fact that you've got Trump saying bonkers things, the frightening uh, prospect of Project 2025, and he's still just about ahead in the polls, is insane, right? Uh, and it just shows how much of, I think, how how problematic Biden still running is. Um, but
But anyway, yeah, as David Frum here said, a former uh, conservative, violent crime is down and the US murder rate is plunging, FBI statistics show. Uh, 2024 shaping up as the largest one-year decline in crime in American history as the U.S. made a ra- murder ra- rates plunge and employment is at its lowest level in 54 years. Uh, tightest job market at least since the 1960s, maybe since World War II. Right now, there are 6 million people between jobs in the U.S. and 8 million job openings clamoring to hire the people between jobs. The U.S. saw prices drop in 2008 to 9 amid the worst recession since the Great Depression. Prices dropped again in 2020 amid the mass layoffs and global pandemic. Now in 2024, prices are dropping again even as unemployment touches historic lows so it's not like the economy is desperate and prices are going down because no one's got jobs jobs it's just this should be really good the number of u.s weddings dropped every year in the trump presidency before utterly collapsing in the pandemic under biden the number of new marriages has recovered to obama level surpassing 2.2 million uh, a year and um, opioid deaths up under Trump, down under Biden. One of the big things that that the Republicans were going on are the opioid crisis and et cetera, et cetera. Well, actually, they're going down, whether you count by number of people driving or by number of miles driven, fatal automobile accidents were up under Trump, down under Biden. Trump recently singled out Washington, D.C. as a zone of terror and crime. While it's true that Biden has not yet completely rolled back the huge surge of crime, the city suffered under Trump. D.C.'s rates of violent crime dropped 22% in 2024. Each and every year of the Trump presidency, fewer American babies were born in the year before. In the first year of Biden's presidency, the number of babies born rose for the first time since 2015. When people have more kids, they need bigger cars. Uh, annual new car sales have plummeted under Trump, have rin- risen under Biden. Trump recently alleged that the shark attacks are on the rise under Biden. This is not true. In fact, the first year of Trump's presidency was one of the worst in the century for shark attacks. So, like, point is, again, I'm not trying to be a shill for Biden, but th- from a, a campaign point of view, this is the absolute, like, if you asked Biden what plan for, platform you would most like to campaign on, it would be this. This is historically a winner for an incumbent government and yet there are troubles and and trump is getting away with lying to his audiences by saying crime is terrible uh economy inflation is terrible and it's like no this is empirically false you are outright lying so it's going to be interesting to see where it goes from here Uh, and i i I surely someone could be leading the charge better than Biden at the moment. I know some of you have a go at me for saying Biden should drop out, but I think, you know, it, it seems fairly clear to me that, that that should be the case and they they should take a risk and it will be a risk. But uh, I think, you know, if you if, especially if you're looking at the polling uh, growing for, say, Harris, I, I would... I I would think she's uh, probably a good option right now. Um, Meanwhile, Russia's oil export revenues have fallen by 16 point or to $16.7 billion in June, a four month low due to decreased crude and petroleum product exports. Yet annual earnings increased by nearly 23%. Um, So, yeah, something funky going on there. Uh, and we have, I don't know why this is not a rending. Oh, yeah. So Peter Magyar, who is the opposition leader in Hungary now to Viktor Orban, has come and done properly decent things as he's visited Kiev. A true leader won't talk about peace as terrorist countries kill children. Like Orban goes around saying, we're going to do peace, going to do peace. Meanwhile, uh, visiting Putin just after Putin blows up uh, children's hospital in Kiev. Well, Magyar, a true leader, will come and bring him humanitarian aid. Here he came to Kiev and gave condolences to the people murdered by Russia, just doing normal human things. And uh, yeah, he is at the moment uh, whipping up quite a bit of support in Hungary. So hopefully uh, he can gather some momentum and, and bring about a political change in Hungary to the benefit of uh, Europe, Ukraine and the US. Um, or at least it depends who you are in the US, right? Uh, Russia, as I mentioned, will not participate in the next uh, peace summit, uh, according to Mikhailo Haluzin, deputy head of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, of the Russian Federation. He called the peace formula, quote, dead end and ultimatum and complained about the deliberate, quote, ignoring of the other initiatives to end the war in Ukraine. What, the ones where Ukraine just capitulates to Russia and gives them everything they want? Uh, Zelensky signed a bilateral Oh, no, I've already talked about that one, sorry. Um, and then uh, Zeluzhny, Valery Zeluzhny, the former uh, chief of staff uh, in, in, 
Chief of Staff, is it? In charge of the armed forces of Ukraine, um, Commander in Chief. Oh, that's it. It says it there. Former Commander in Chief. It's too early. Uh, Valery Zeleshny assumed the role of Ukrainian ambassador to the United Kingdom. So he's been in training for that. I guess probably also doing English lessons as well to make sure his English is is on point and he's uh, picking up his role now in reference to a new ambassador role Zeluzhny wrote on social media that he was continuing to serve Ukraine uh, the victory of Ukraine in the war against the Russian aggressor remains the main priority of my activities and the activities of the embassy Zeluzhny added just to add something I'm just going to talk about this later but the UK came out and and said they that Russia could use uh, sorry that Ukraine could use storm shadows what was it they, they did include the word defensively and everyone, including um, Zelensky, was saying, that's brilliant, we can use Storm Shadows into Russia. And the MOD, British MOD, have come out today and uh, clarified that, no, they can't use them, it's Storm Shadows into Russia. Now, either this was always the case, as it was, I think, under Sunak, and that's why they haven't used them. And it was a misinterpretation. And I said it could well be that yesterday because the, the language looked very similar to... Um, to what the previous government had said and then Zelensky seemed to roll with it and say yeah we can go use uh, storm shadows and then the MOD have come out and said uh actually you can't in into Russia so either that was just no change in policy and Starmer's just continued the previous policy on the storm shadow or Starmer did say you can use them and the only explanation would be the US has come along and said uh UK no they can't and in which case, the MOD has then come out and said, oh, sorry about that, Zelensky. No, you can't. Either way, this is highly disappointing. But I'm fairly sure it won't have as much to do with the UK as it... And I'm not trying to get the UK off the hook here or, or the Labour government or whatever off the hook. We have heard this before that uh, the... Um, Individual governments have been giving the go-ahead for Ukraine to use stuff. But Zelensky himself has said we can't use that stuff because of what the US has said. He said that in an interview some time back. And so it appears that Ukraine is still constrained in being able to use Western uh, weaponry, even if it's not American, because probably because of what the Americans have uh, dictated. Um, so that's an absolute... I don't know, it's just, it really annoys me. It really annoys me that, that there is still this anti-escalation mood amongst allies and that Ukraine is not able to blow up bloody uh, air bases that, that house these planes that are dropping missiles and bombs on Ukraine. It's just it's insane. Anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. Sorry that this is uh, before my normal first video, but it was all left over from yesterday. Uh, and I'll speak to you very soon.